Um, but I think whilst whilst we're doing that, I'll just do the brief intro. Um, we've we've done this roundtable before in in the region in in Jakarta. I found it very interesting. So thanks very much for for Joseph from Auth Zero, and and uh, John from Mind Valley, who will be coming in and giving us an overview of identity management, and especially in relation to a very fast growing growing uh, client, Mind Valley. So what I can do is I'll allow the gentlemen to uh, to introduce themselves first, and then what we'll be doing is facilitating this with a um, a few slides, and really having a conversation around how Mind Valley um, integrated, adopted Auth Zero on their on their journey to become um, a personal growth platform, which has become very much digital. So uh, John, uh, so Joseph, perhaps you could kick this off. How would you want to introduce yourself and um, the topic? Sure. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Jonathan, uh, and uh, a good afternoon to everybody. Um, so my, my name is Joseph, and I am from Org Zero. Uh, you know, re really thank everyone for joining us in this uh, discussion. Um, like what? Um, what John has uh, briefly introduced, um, you know, I, you know, on the topic of uh, building customer identity, um, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through some slides as guiding principles, and then, um, you know, have a conversation and a, a bit of a sharing from, from John from my belly, um, but uh, you know. You know, going going back to the topic of uh, building customer identity, I, I I think this is becoming very critical in today's era. Um, you know, we like to know our customers, uh, at least based on what they want you to know, their preferences, etc. And 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 you know, the, the whole essence of building customer identity is also around creating a frictionless uh, customer experience for your customer that is coming into your property. Um, last but not least, what we are seeing um, as a pretext to, to this topic uh, is around, it's, it's not so much on not simply providing identities, it's also about how um, we secure them. And, you know, on, on that, on that basis, uh, you know, Oak Zero, we have empowered many, we have empowered many, many businesses and organizations in building their customer identity um, in, in a very seamless and very effective manner. Um, and, and on that basis, um, Oak Zero, actually, as a software company, we believe strongly that uh, we shouldn't undermine uh, the importance of building and securing customer identity. So may maybe a, a quick uh, overview or introduction of uh, of what we do at Org Zero. Um, at a very basic level, we we offer or we do identity for applications that you build. Uh, whether it's identity through a lock-in screen or even an app to an app connection through APIs, we do the authentication part of it. And, and as you can see, uh, and, and I'm sure you will agree with me, uh, in today's context, when you look at an, 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 when you look at an, an application itself, um, identity it's a very critical part because it's the main door, the main access point into into what you differentiate your business in, and and and, and this is something that that Oak Zero has been able um, through identity as a service that we provide to enable and empower our customers to build customer identity. Uh, we have enabled various businesses across the globe big and small startups to to um to well establish organization uh, by enabling in excess of five billion lock-in per month um and 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 as you can see 
more and more businesses will will transform and and move their business into the digital world um and 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 building this identity this this digital twin of your customer becomes uh ever more important so you know as as what i flash on the screen are customers um perhaps well-known brands that you might be familiar with uh i i had the privilege of having one of our very long time customer my valley uh john from john john is a technology architect from my valley um um you know john maybe at this juncture it might be good for for you to to introduce yourself uh maybe about what my valley is what you do at my valley and how my valley is using home zero okay uh, hi there uh, my name is john and i am currently the technology architect in my valley so I, my, I guess my job scope will be pretty much like a principal architect um, but maybe to set some context first, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what Mind Valley does and how you know how Off Zero kind of like fit into our company. So for us, Mind Valley is in the ad tech space, uh, mostly B two C, and our goal is kind of to further education and personal growth. So most uh, what we do is we are kind of like a publisher for online courses, and these courses focuses mostly on uh, personal growth and also soft skills. So not uh, a little bit different from you know the other competitors like you know uh, Coursera and stuff like that. So right now we are three hundred strong, uh, three hundred plus, and our dev team is about 70, 70, uh, 70 80, yeah, including the designers and product product managers as well. And we build uh, various products uh, because we are a multi business unit company. So meaning that we also control multiple brands, not just our own brand, which is my value. So this also this uh, kind of like segues to uh, what we use of zero for. So for because we are a multi business unit company, uh, we require a single sign on, uh, which allows us to log in to any of uh, Mind Valley's uh, business businesses or applications through a single login. So I guess that covers like a bit of the context of what you're doing. Thanks, John, for, for sharing uh, more about my valley and how you're using um, um, Hope Zero. Um, you know, really, as, as uh, you know, going back to the topic of uh, the importance of building customer identity, I, I, I think as, as, uh, as a vendor, you know, Hope Zero, we we engage with a lot of business and and you know you know we we really want to understand some of their challenges and and i and i think i, I just want to at this juncture um you know share with the, the the audience you know um as you look at building customer identity you know uh what what are the main challenges uh some of which you might already know some of it you 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 might you you might already feel it um, as uh, if you're already um, in that journey of uh, building up your customer identity. I, I I think what what comes up very strongly, uh, like like how I started, um, it, it's not it's not as simple as just providing identity. It's it's the the the, the holistic aspect of, of 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 a spectrum of challenges that. Um, um, any business will will go through as they go through this journey. Um, you know, as you look at it, um, security is up there. Uh, it becomes even more evident. Uh, the threat to cyber security is real. Um, it's important. Um, you know, to 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 also evaluate whether uh, the traditional username password suffices um, for you to authenticate your customers. Um, then, then as we look at the, the economical landscape, um, we we no longer have the tolerance or or, or the, the longer runway of trying to 
to to monetize whatever the digitalization effort they were trying to do. So it, it is pretty much uh, a wide spectrum security, and then I I covered the the part on you know revenue, which is uh, which is affected by how quickly you can go to market with the shortage of talent, uh, finding the right people that has the the right expertise on on handling identity um you know all that with with the different technical protocols that that spans across and depending on your your business growth uh how how do we how do we holistically look at look at uh addressing all this aspect um uh, if you want to build um an effective and a reliable uh, customer identity um, solution uh, that works for your business. So this this pretty much uh, uh, sum up some of the discussions that we have with our customers uh, across the globe. Um, and and as as many would would naturally think uh, that. I could build this myself. Do I build it? Do I do I just leverage your service? Uh, I I I I think as we we talk about uh, identity having a spectrum of uh, factors that that contribute to its success, uh, I I like to say that it's not as simple as it is. Uh, it is not. As simple as just providing a login screen, uh, it, it is the whole spectrum of how do how do we uh, ensure that uh, we remove the friction from the users to to access to login. Uh, how do we continuously provide the necessary support uh, to your business partners uh, or to your other stakeholders within your business to be able to provide. Uh, a very innovative business offering, and 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 with that, the the the, the initial first step to building customer identity is always a struggle. Yes, I need it. Yes, uh, I need it secure. I need it whatever. Do I build it? Do I have the ability to build it? I I I, I think I think this is typically the first thought process. Do I build it or do I do I leverage a service like 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 Alt Zero? Um, so maybe uh, John, uh, now that that you have decided, you know, you know, maybe candidly, let me ask you, uh, you know, have you ever considered building identity on your own? Um, and you know, what 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 were your thought process? You know, maybe you can share with the audience, you know, what you went through as an architect, and then uh, how how did. How did you arrive in deciding that you rather leverage on zero uh, to take care of identity versus building it yourself? Okay. Um, well, the short answer is that we did build our identity solution previously. Uh, of course, there are a lot more details to that. Um, maybe I'll just dive deep into uh, a story. Maybe we had like seven, pretty much seven years ago, I think six, seven years ago. Uh, that was when we started our journey on trying to solve this issue. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are a company with you know multiple businesses and quite a lot of assets. Like we have multiple uh, websites to log in, multiple mobile apps to log in as well. And the landscape then seven years ago and now is a little bit different. Like right now, Right now, we our, we have a core learning platform. We build it on Elixir. Uh, we have a user and purchase uh, management platform as well internally. Uh, we also built that in Elixir. But previously, there were a lot of apps in uh, different languages, uh, mostly Ruby on Rails, some in PHP, and then we have quite a few mobile apps. So at that point of time, uh, our greatest concern was the fragmentation of uh, our user identity, right? So be having you know multiple applications, multiple databases, uh, the users are you know creating accounts and logging in in uh, in all our different uh, apps and sites, and there's just no way to consolidate them together. 
So the first goal we were aiming for was to handle uh, single sign-on. And at that point of time, uh, there weren't many, there weren't many choices of how to go about it. And I guess the most important thought process yet, like you have in your mind would be that, okay, uh, how do we solve this problem, right? Uh, as a developer, obviously we'll always lean towards, you know, we can be our own, there are open source tools available. And we did, we did build, we did build something on Ruby on Rails, uh, using some of the libraries available. And we decided to implement the OAuth 2 standard. At that point of time, was pretty, I guess, was pretty new. But at least it was an open standard, which we really believe uh, how authentication should be done, right? Because the rest of the solutions out there, we did consider uh, other solutions uh, in the market, and most of them were using uh, pretty, I guess, pretty close standards, which makes it a bit difficult for us to understand what is happening behind. So. Fast forward that we took two, a man, a two man team, I guess, in six months, we managed to produce something. Uh, we had a working SSO, we managed to kind of like merge all the login for all our different assets all together. And I guess that's where, that's where the real consideration comes in, right? So when, as you start building your own, then you realize that uh, we are spending, at that point of time, our team was pretty small, right? So with a small team, you are spending a significant portion of time trying to catch up with the trends of both security, authentication, uh, catching up with the changing standards of OAuth at that point of time. And there's just a lot of considerations and features that are being requested uh, by management as well. So for instance, we did manage to do SSO, but we did not have a mobile SDK yet for a mobile, uh, you know, for, for a mobile team to implement it easily. So that would be, you know, a feature list, uh, a huge feature list there, you know, to kind of like, okay, we want to support, uh, uh, let's say multiple social logins, you know, that's another feature list. Then we have support like, you know, uh, brute force protection against, you know, attacks. Then there'll be another feature list. So as, as we progress through and have a better understanding of the landscape, then we decided that, you know, uh, this is probably something that, uh, although we can, we might be able to do on our own, but it's probably something that we should focus on our business on what we are good at, which is our core value proposition. And authentication will always be there. It's always needed, but probably it could be done better when outsourced to a solution. So it's during that time that we, we kind of like search for solutions out there. And I went, I think at that point, I thought of it was pretty, pretty new, pretty young. And what, what happened was that we picked the solution because of their support for open standards. Uh, they had open ID connect, they had JWT, they had all of two flows. So we had a very good understanding of, uh, this current flow already. Uh, therefore it's like a no brainer to pick a service that uses the same flow. That's, right. that, that, that's great, John. I just wondered where you are today. And also just like to remind everyone that the questions will go in the chat and we have, we have about six minutes and I think, um, we, we can sort of interact on the chat or take questions afterwards if that's okay. Um, so, so where would you be today with the, uh, deployment? Okay. So I think right now, right now for, for us, uh, all our public facing sites or our public facing API and the login to our internal applications are all handled by Off0. Uh, so all authentication is, you know, using JWT, using Off0 to log in. And uh, we are looking into, you know, into like moving forward with also enterprise login as well. Very nice. Thanks, uh, thanks John for sharing. I, and, I, and I think it's interesting, right? Uh, you have been to both sides uh, uh, of the equation uh have been built then you know and and obviously there were push factor that uh, encourage you to 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 um to go with with op zero um you know ho hopefully th this is good learning for for everyone on on uh, at the call um you know um, i i i guess you know looking at build versus buy uh i just want at this juncture to very quickly point you to um, a Forrester Commission uh, report uh, in terms of um, the payback. Uh, should you go with identity? Like what John mentioned, identity is going to be there. Um, in, in, in all the applications that, that you will build in, in the future, 
and and this is this, this is more more um, a report that people people um, have actually gone out to real customers and 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 done done uh, uh, analysis of it. Um, so on, on that, John also covered as part of his decision making on on why uh, he selected Op Zero uh, versus uh, something that he built. I, I, I think one of the things that clearly differentiate Op Zero is the fact that that we offer in excess of 60 SDKs. So in short, whatever dev stack that you have chosen, that you have pre that you prefer to use, you you will typically be able to find an SDK that we offer, that we support. So that really allows your your development team to be able to quickly hook on onto an identity service like Op Zero. The second part is is more on what what John also mentioned around the fact that Op Zero is based on open standards, and it is important uh, that as you walk this journey of building customer identity, um, uh, you want the confidence that whatever you choose to use um, is is future proof and it, it it doesn't it doesn't create um a, a end of a road uh, kind of journey for you uh should something become non-supported in that sense last but not least as as you leverage the digital world uh in scaling your business in whatever sense uh it is also important uh, to entrust your identity uh to a vendor that that provides you the ability to scale up uh, as your business grows, and this is something that O Zero is proud um, to say that we 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 actually have man managed billions of logins per month and achieving ninety nine point nine nine percent of our time. Um, so that said, you know all that speed scale future proof uh more importantly uh we adapt into into whatever use case whether yours is uh, uh a b2c which which is what my value is um you know uh we we as an identity platform uh provides you with all the building blocks or the hooks that that will embed identity into your organization, um, providing you with various options for lock on. Uh, interestingly, um, uh, username and password is just one option. Uh, these days, users are becoming more and more demanding where they want social lock in and uh, any other options. So, holistically, as a platform, this is what uh, we offer. Um, zero to our customers so that um, you get you get to market faster um, with the with the least amount of risk and you have the confidence that uh, your customer identity is is really uh, well well secured so at, at this juncture I mean this is this is pretty much my last slide but it, you know um, as I was uh, Listening to John sharing with with the audience uh, of the journey that he has taken, some of his thought process. You know, John, may, maybe it would be good for you to quickly share with us. You know, what's next? You know, now that now that you've selected all zero, now that your SSO is taken care of. You know, what what are the immediate next plans for for my valley? I think the most obvious one would be B two B, I guess. Uh, onboarding enterprises will be a lot easier if they log in, you know, using their enterprise login. Uh, that was already planned, but our B two B strategy is still is still coming coming to light, lah. I guess for now, because our main focus is on B two C. Something else would be automation as well. Uh, right now, we want we don't control our R back uh, on Op Zero itself. It's something that we might want to uh, figure out and implement where whenever we onboard uh, uh, an employee into Mind Valley, uh, automations will be done to ensure that they have uh, correct access to the different applications at the right levels.
Sure. Thanks. Uh, you know, I, 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 I think the three minutes uh, to the clock. Uh, Jonathan, is there? Maybe we can take a, a two or one or two questions from. Yeah, Jonathan. sure. Thanks. Thanks for that. And uh, we're we're on time here. Um, so that's a really good elaboration of what a six-year journey, as I, I understand it, and, and still going strong. So I'm just waiting for questions in the chat. Uh, so feel free to put questions in the chat. If anyone wants to sort of catch up with uh, Auth0 uh, or Mind Value afterwards, the chat will be open for a few minutes or you can go to the booth. We have a question which came in um, when people registered and that was uh, broadly about the, what challenges. So it sounds really smooth at the moment, but let's face it, there were challenges. So what challenges would people typically face or did Mind Valley face with digital customer identity? especially in APAC. And, you know, one, one, another question was around, you know, security, any, any recommendations around security in particular? So okay. if I address that to John. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let, let, let me help out with the, the challenges uh, on a high level. So besides the challenges that I've covered, I, I think in Asia Pacific, uh, one of the main challenge, uh, especially for legacy business, is the fact that digital transformation, whether they're building customer identity or not, um, you know, all goes back down to what they are or, 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 net or organically. Um, so the transformation is both business transformation coupled with technology transformation. So that the rest are basically what I've covered uh, in the, the earlier part of challenges on talent, security, and what have you. Great. Um, so if there's no further questions um, in the in the chat, what we can do is we will close the session and, and just hang around here for a few more minutes. Uh, also put the question, uh, is there any way you would like people to contact you, uh, Joseph? Uh, you just just come to the Oxero Zero booth and then, uh, you know, we'll have somebody there um, to be able to, to, to take your questions. Okay, that's great. Okay, thanks very much, Joseph and John and everyone who attended. Um,